Thank you for tuning in to Turn the Pages, and I am your host, Jordan Rivers, and we have our lovely guest again, John. Of course, you can probably tell by now that he's definitely one of my favorites, but I think I've favorites. had some amazing guests this entire season, and we're actually winding down, so this is the third to the last episode, so it's a happy and, and a sad <laughs> moment for me especially, um, and I'm not as nervous as I used to be opening mm -hmm. up the show and starting our topics um so i just want to take a moment and thank you all for tuning in this entire season i'm truly blessed to have you all as viewers and so i'm just going to take a minute um and just let you know about turn the pages we are we're an organization we promote literacy we actually go around to schools and do red carpet events book readings and signings with the children so and I am actually one of the authors on tour and, mm -hmm. and the only author at the at this point of time but stay tuned <laughs> because we're gonna be doing some amazing things for families um, this year in Chicagoland area and beyond. So if you can take a moment and go straight here, www.turn-the-pages.org for more information on our organization. Or if you would like to email us about a show or a question, go right to info at turn-the-pages.org. Yes. So last week we talked about education, um, especially within the black males of the community. Are they protecting us and being educated the way that they should? So there we had a, a caller or, or two uh, who was able to give their opinion. But first, I do want to open up with giving uh, John a moment to talk to you about something that has affected his family. Oh, thank you once again, and uh, hello to the listening audience. Uh, once again, I would like to reiterate that uh, a couple of weeks ago, I lost my cousin Malik Bingham and his uh, fiance Tia Moore and their child, who wasn't born yet, Malia, I'm sorry, Tia Jones and their child, Malia Jones. So once again, I asked my family and my community to please come out and speak up if you find any information concerning these tragic events and any help will be uh, definitely grateful. So once again, I would ask if you know anything about the murders of my cousin Malik Bingham and his girlfriend Tia Jones and their child, please come forward. Thank you. And I'm going to give it back to the host. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Sorry that even happened. I know. It, it, I love you, cuz. So um, today's topic, we are talking about does the lack of reading and education damage the relationships of families and so uh, last week we discussed the how the black men um, or the lack thereof may not be taking care of the community the way that they should or we feel like they're supposed to but they also had a lot to fight against, even at a, a, a early stage in their life, from the schools not really putting in a lot of funding for reading at a young age. And once you reach third grade or, or and, and or fourth grade, if you cannot read at your reading level, then more money is um, invested into the prison system because if you can't read, if you can't write, if you can't comprehend, then nine times out of ten you're not going to be able to compete in the workforce and actually have a job or a career where you are making a decent living so that you can, port, uh, can support yourself and your family. So you eventually end up into a life full of crime. So that's why reading and education is important. And so when we talk about the black community especially and we talk about reading and education, it, it is a problem because when you go yes. into a lot of our communities, it, they, they are poverty stricken. You have some communities that are in the process of becoming better. And so one of those communities are Inglewood. You're starting to see a lot more people trying to push that community forward but it is definitely because of the people within that community who may not have the education that they feel they should have but mm -hmm. more so of because they want more and so when you want more you tend to go out there and you find things and the way you find things 
a lot of times has to do, do with research. And so that's why reading is so important because uh, for what some people want to do a lot mm -hmm. of times, you may not need a degree. You, you don't need a degree to start a business depending on what that business is. So you need to be able to read and you need to be able to write, comprehend, and research and just pretty much do a lot of things on your own without necessarily going to enroll in classes. However, mm -hmm. Chicago has a great uh, community for education. So we're talking about the 80 Chicago public libraries that we have. There are 80 and they're all over. So whenever you have a moment, um, look them up. Look them up online, see what library is actually in your area, go to them. They have a lot of programs from uh, reading programs for the summertime. They have preschool programs. So if you have a young child that is not in daycare or you're, you're just at home with them, especially in the summertime, you can actually take your child to the library for story time. And that's definitely an activity that, you know, a lot of young kids love. They want people to read to them. So mm -hmm. I am going to actually move forward and we talked about the, the black men so now let's mm -hmm. talk about the women and are we supporting enough of our kings um, mm -hmm. in our communities and so I, I would like to say we are you know at least yes. we're trying. <laughs> I definitely feel like uh, black women are uh, uh, the torch that we that black men need to carry. I feel uh, even when I talk about New Era Chicago, uh, they go out. No black men are taking care of business, but they always say when they go police the community that not enough men are coming out. They're saying more women are coming out to police their own community than men. So as black men, that's that's something that we should not be proud of. That our women are risking their lives to make sure our communities are safer than our men. So I would ask you know any guy you know. Put the game making mentality down and protect your family, which is your, your community. And don't feel ashamed with someone telling you that they need your help. You should embrace that. So, you know, yes, I, I look forward to this conversation. Absolutely. And I think one of the ways that we can all, you know, pitch in to protect our community is by the, the block clubs. Because I, I think block clubs still exist in, mm -hmm. in, in a lot of different areas. But if it was uh, more people on a block club, especially men, um, knowing who your neighbors are, who the children in the area are, who your your senior citizens. Um, yes. We don't tend to our senior citizens enough, and one day we're going to become them. So we need to make sure that we have something in place that protects our entire community, and I'm sure you can find information in a library or online on how to start your block club and things to do and, and ways to make it safe. So whether you have, I think a good idea is actually putting a camera on someone's house on one end of the block and the other just to help to be able to police a little yeah, bit on your own it's block. It's no doubt because uh, from my experience, it's like um, you got all these blue light cameras in people's communities, but I have never seen the effect or seen any data that it has subsided violence. And sometimes, because that's like my cousin who was murdered before my younger cousin, uh, he was killed on the block with a police camera, and it, it, it really didn't do any effect. So I agree with the host when she's saying, let's do it ourselves. And that way we can take the money that we're paying them for taxes and put that back into our educational system. So to, all, yeah, to all my carpenter friends out there, guys who are self-sufficient and doing these things, you know, step up for us. You know, we, don't, we should have to go to the government for this when we're out here fixing people's houses every day or playing with technology. If we want to make a difference, it starts with us. It does. It, it starts with us. So whether or not we feel like the school system is supporting us the way that we need to, we have to support each other. We have to support our teachers, our yes, parents, our neighbors, our children. They are our future. And yes. so we have to be careful on how we nurture them um, because they do need to be nurtured. And if there's something that you don't know, there's always an answer whether you look in a book or you ask another person. So you can find it. So I want to talk about how parents or just women in general are supportive and um, black women, we are definitely yes. empowered and we are making some headway that we really don't see the black man 
making. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're definitely going to go into that. But I want to talk about Toya Graham. I don't know if you all remember um, Toya Graham, but she was actually in the news because her son was rioting over the Freddie Gray incident. And so she recognized him and she went out there found him and whooped him on <laughs> on TV in, in front of the cameras. And so there was a lot of backlash she received. It, it was people saying, oh, she didn't have to do that. That's so embarrassing. And then there were people applauding her because she recognized her child. And instead of not punishing him and just letting him do whatever he wanted to do, she mm -hmm. reprimanded him and she did it publicly and she didn't care. And so I, I feel like that's one of the ways that we as women in general, we protect our children and we don't care who who sees it actually. Mm -hmm. And I have right. I applaud her because her she did say in an interview that she was protecting him because when you're out there and you're rioting and you're protesting, you have no idea what type of retaliation, you know, or the police may may go against you. Yes. You just don't know. So she did it to protect her child. And in a lot of cases, black women, we do stand in front of the men in our community to protect them because we're tired. It it really wears me down thinking about how many black men get killed every single day and especially our young men who have not even started life and, and it, it it's a sad thing. So before I get all emotional <laughs> we're gonna go back to um an excerpt that I read from Women in African Colonial Histories. Um page two twenty, I remember the page number. <laughs> so it says that Queen Mothers were not just women rulers, they were women who ruled by doing for kings the things that mothers did for their sons which included supporting advising defending protecting punishing and nurturing in a in a gendered system of political power a mother's work translated into a queen mother's responsibilities for the nation so even you know centuries ago we we were respected we had power, we cared about our communities, we cared about our sons, we cared about our kings, and so we've always had that role to tend to nurture everyone around us. And so mm -hmm. it's sad that when you look at the roles today, we, we still have those roles because at, at one point in time, I want to say uh, black women are some of the most educated women in a nation at this point. We yeah. are going to school and starting businesses at an alarming rate. And so when you when you talk about protecting, you know, our community, this is something that you see us doing. Look at who we have as uh, Cook County Board President right uh, right now, Tony Preckwinkle. Right. So here she is, a woman who is nurturing, and she is actually taking care of, of the county and doing a great job, I believe. So yeah, because I want to touch on that when I would say uh, it's no surprise to me that black women do are doing good because historically black women have always been the, the standard, especially when it comes to education. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, it was a, a black woman that created math. Where you get the word mayat from. Black women uh, created agriculture to make sure that they men wouldn't have to go out there and keep hunting and be away from his family. So historically, yes, yeah, she's right. Things have changed. Not only, I told her earlier, not only for people that was in Africa, but worldwide, black women were the most respected deity in the world. We talk about Oshun, or we talk about uh, Het Haru, so, you know, I, 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 I always tell people how much I love black women, you know, because it's, it's a gift. Yes, so we are beautiful beings. Yeah, <laughs> not the most, I, I say the most beautiful, so, you know, there's no competition. Hey, hey, I like that. Yeah, it's um, true. And uh, article that the TheRoot.com uh, placed out uh, by Angela Bronner Helm, she said that the good news is a new report confirms that black women are now the most educated group in the United States. But we will have a long way to go for um, equality. So according to the National Center for Education Statistics, between 2009 and 2010, black women earned 68% of all associate, uh, associate degrees awarded to black students, as well as 66% of bachelor degrees, 71% mm -hmm. of master degrees, and 65% of all doctorates awarded to black students. So those are some 
pretty big numbers. And so that means that we're seeing a problem and we want to fix it. Because most of the time when you're going to school, when you're trying to educate yourself, it's because you're inspired to do something that actually helps a group of people. Mm -hmm. hey, and, and once again, I would like to touch on that historically. The university and college was created by black men and women. You, you create the social degree, the master degree. You can go check this in the history of more Spain, where you brought 17 universities into Europe. And this is well documented. So when we talk about high education, this is your culture, black people. You always put education at a high level. And that's why you were so revered by the people who are known as the ancient Greeks, who, who you brought math, alphabet, science. So when I hear about this education thing, I, I expect us to always excel because... Studies have shown that black babies' necks hold up quicker than white babies. So this is showing that your education acceleration really is uh, not really to be challenged. So, yes, I always feel that black people should always uh, understand that you are the smartest beings on the planet, to me, from everything I studied. So. Absolutely. Um, and when we talk about education and protecting the community, and last week we talked about, you know, are the women being protected enough? So mm -hmm. one of the like hottest topics makes people angry is music. Mm -hmm. Because my personal opinion is that I feel like we are the most disrespected yes, I, I in, in music. We are called names just beyond our control. And it's really sad because we do support our men. But the issue that I have is... Not only do we do so much, but when we're talking about the, about black men and and we we call a lot of people I, I notice in this day and age we call each other queens and kings because mm -hmm. we want each other to know who we were and that we should act as such. Well, if a man sees another woman on the street or whatever, he should never ever disrespect her and call her out of her name, and it happens more than you know. If someone decides to ask me for my number and I refuse, then I'm a B. And that's just not fair. And so mm -hmm. then you have then then you have the music where we're actually being disrespected on a national level by all kind of men uh, uh, men and a lot of the, the times these men are educated. So they have degrees or they have some type of education under their belt. So they're very educated. And so I feel that as a king, instead of calling us out of our name, if we're doing something where it may be being promiscuous or we don't know something, then it's your responsibility to educate me and say, yes. you know what, queen, this is not how we're going to do it. I don't like what you did or, you know, you're better than this. You don't have to do X, Y, Z. But instead, we constantly get respected, but we always put our necks on the line to save your life. Yes, so it, I true. feel like it's disrespectful and it, it's just unheard of and, as, and, as far and, as, you and know, I trying say, to be yeah. respected. And I would say also to my uh, black brothers, African war brothers, whatever you uh, identify with, is that like she says, it's, it's no reason that the original woman on the planet Earth feels as if you're not giving her respect. And also when she pertains to music, we have to understand that that seems to be a strategy to destroy our family because if we go back to the creation of music in America, you created all genres, but but yet you keep you keep wanting to emphasize that you're just a rapper. What happened mm -hmm. to playing instruments? You know what happened to become a, a more intricate composer when it comes to your original creation? And there's no reason if you were to study music that you, that, that you see anybody James Brown, Michael Jackson, yes, Sam Prince, because Prince yeah. played a lot of instruments and he. This definitely or was definitely vital to our communities. He did a lot of things under the radar that actually helps the community, whether it was, you know, donating uh, funds yes. for education, uh, all of that stuff. It played a major role. So the fact that we are disrespected, even on a national level, how can anyone of another race respect us when our exactly. own men don't even respect us? Not, yes. not, not enough to show people how we should be treated. And a lot of times when you have young boys growing up and you see you know uh, and they see other women getting respected disrespected or young girls that's what they begin to do and then it starts this horrible cycle of just you know not knowing how to treat a woman 
Yeah. And, you know, and, and that in general, that's not just a black issue. That's uh, across the board. And a lot of times men can be so disrespectful, but we birth you. You are right. the, we, we're the reason why you here. Everybody says, it, okay? <laughs> so, because I got, I always tell me, show me a, a, a woman come out of man rib. So, i never seen it, but I have seen a, a woman, a man come out of woman's womb. And so, as she's saying, we need to respect our women because when we start respecting our women, we will start to ascend to where we need to be at. Uh, uh, I'm a student also of Dr. Uh, Dr. Men, and he says, show me how you treat your women, and I'll show you the status of your people in the world. So, black people, most likely you're suffering because you're not respecting your woman and cherishing her and really let her know, I really appreciate you being there for me, other than trying to be cool or gangster. Throw that away and go back to the original queen and be a king for her, okay? And protect her. Absolutely. And the thing is, it starts at home. Learning starts at home. So, you know, when we talk about the school system, regardless, it starts at yes. home. Everything from manners, self-respect, all of it starts from home. So, even if you feel like as a parent or a community leader, you have not done the best job. You can always start from where you are and don't feel bad about maybe not doing something or making mistakes because that's what people do. We make mistakes. But once you realize that you've made a mistake, then you have to pull your pants up yes. <laughs> <laughs> and walk forward from 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 your you know um, issue or your mistake. You have to keep moving forward. Yeah, and so and we have so many young girls who lack self-esteem because the father's mm. not being in, in the house or playing a role. And I don't understand how another human being who helped make a little one will not reach out to their child, will not father yes. their child. Yes. And I don't know if that's an education thing or it's just something that, like, bad people do. I, I like, I really don't know. Uh, if, if learning starts at home, are they not? in the home with their children because of lack of education. Like what, to me, I, I want to know personally, what makes a, a father or a dad not be in their child's life, whether it's a daughter or a son, to be that example so that we can actually nurture them to be better citizens um, throughout our communities. And so mm -hmm. ed education, you know, it's always going to come up. Well, are they educated? And when you say are they educated, like what does that really mean? Because we have, it, it's like a what a common sense thing. When, yeah, when you say, yeah, make cause, something, cause you follow you don't, it. You, you don't need to be educated to go to be there for your child, you know? Because me as also as a coach, it's plenty of kids that I've ran into where even I go to schools, there's not a male presence there. But if I go outside, I see a bunch of guys hanging on the corner with their pants hanging down. Mm -hmm. These kids, your kids, my kids, they need to see a better example from us black men. We need to step up and we need to quit being so cool where everybody owns all the business in our neighborhood. Absolutely. They're not our friend, okay? And wait a minute. You said something. You said with their pants hanging down off their butts or something yeah, like that, know. right? Okay, but you know where they came from, right? Yes, please yeah, inform the well, well, you inform me. You're the man, so I want you to break it down well, because I, I know where it came from. So, it, you know, sometimes the, if another young guy hears it from a man, then they'll listen to it before they listen to me. Yeah, well, historically, the second of the pants came from when slaves used to try to enslave Africans tried to escape the plantation, and the slave master would make him sag his pants. That way, when he tried to escape, it would be more difficult, and he would trip over his pants, mm -hmm. sometime leading to his murder. And so when we are trying to uh, uh, accept this as a cultural or a fashion, we're really being played as a joke because... How can we say we're a gangster or tough when our, our pants are sagging? Show me a box in the ring and his us fighting and his and his and his drawers are hanging off of him. That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. So whoever has told you guys that that's cool or fashionable, they are setting you up for failure. And also you're setting a bad example not only for young men but for young women because you're letting her think that this is cool. Her her having a man who behind is showing more than hers. I don't understand that ideology. So I mm -hmm. feel that it's a lot of room for growth. It is. 
And so I, I just really think that there are a lot of more black men than we really do see. And we definitely, as a black woman, we need more support from our men in our communities because we have to be protected. Um, oh my gosh, we have to wrap up. It's like never enough time. There's so much to say. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go like slow to make sure we, we get all the details in. But the bottom line, education, reading, all of this is so important because it makes people and individuals a better person and when you have better people collectively as, as a group then you have better communities so thank yeah. you so much for tuning in and also I, I would like to say one more time uh please show me what the greeks said they created philosophy because this is dealing with education okay so other than that you know thank you thank the host for inviting me out again <laughs> and Yes, I, I love John. He definitely has great conversation and keeps things going. So if, if you uh, have any questions or comments, definitely go to our website, www.turn-the-pages.org, <laughs> and I would love to hear from you. Have a great week, Uncle and I'll see you Monday. <laughs> Thank you.